Hi, I'm John Turmel, trying to engineer heaven by next month. If we can talk the rich at the World Economic Forum in Davos, or the poor at the World Social Forum in Belém, Latin America, to get together and both endorse the 2000 Millennium Declaration Resolution C6 to Governments to restructure the global financial architecture using an alternative time-based currency. Imagine how your world would change if when you went to the bank you had access not only to your Canadian account and your American account, but also a Let's Time Bank account at the same branch. And you could pay someone by cutting a check in Canadian funds or in American funds or in some time bank funds. I owe you four hours for that session over there, whatever it be. Now, people think that a time bank necessarily everybody's time is equal to the same thing. And there have been many time banks started in the past where that was so. But the fatal flaw is that you're not going to find any doctors whose time is worth more, and probably most, to people who are desperate, who are going to participate to get one hour per hour, when their true value in any economy should be three or four or five or ten hours per hour. So, at the Time Dollar Conference in King City a couple of years ago, they had tried out some ten-minute tokens to see, you know, demonstrate how you could actually use paper or other kind of tokens as time tokens to do trading with. And I got to demonstrate by pulling out my accordion and playing accordion and people throwing in time tokens that I could earn four hours per hour, 40 10 minute, or sorry, 10 six minute time tokens per hour, which means that in a free capitalist society, I as an entertainer am worth four hours per hour if that's what I can bring in playing my accordion. So that was my way to demonstrate that once you have an interest free, token system available to you, the free market takes over. Sure, you're cutting checks saying I owe you one hour per hour as you're spending stuff. I spend four hours, five hours, and an hour is basically a student hour, an unskilled hour of labor to do stuff. Everything else is multiples of that. But still, if you can command two hours per hour back or three hours per hour back or ten hours per hour back. Let me give you an example. Let's say, for instance, that the sewer system just breaks down and it takes one guy to get down in the sewer for eight hours and dig out the shit. Nobody wants to do it, right? And you're certainly not. Anyway, they put an ad on the work board on the internet says, okay, we need one guy to go spend eight hours deep in the shit digging it out and we'll pay you three hours per hour. Nobody responds. So, ten minutes later, they up with the, we'll pay you four hours per hour. Nobody responds. Five hours, ten hours, fifteen, twenty, fifty hours per hour. Hey, just like a rock star. Finally, some guy says 50 hours per hour times eight hours. Well, that's 400 hours, you know. And geez, I could buy a yacht. I think I'm not a yacht, but a boat. And I've always wanted that. So, okay, I'll go spend the eight hours digging the shit at 50 hours per hour. And everybody in the civilization chips in their share to pay the guy what the free market said he was worth because no one else wanted to do it. Well, that's how the agora of the world of the future is going to work. Jobs will go up and there will be immediate instant access to people who want to do it. And when they do it, they get paid in the hours according to the rate that they want. Anyway, give you an example of another way. I was on the 401 driving somewhere the other day and I was looking at these huge potholes, like two inches of tar gone, you know, and potholes like a foot wide and sometimes two feet long and you're hitting them. And I'm saying... The only reason we can't have people out there fixing potholes as fast as they come up is there's not enough money, right? Usual problem. Got to only have one or two crews ready to go in. Well, in the new world, you could actually run like a taxi cab with a dispatcher and say, okay, someone reports a pothole over there. Who wants to go over and grab it? And there's a picture. It's this long, it's this wide, and we'll give you so much for it. And that companies out there can organize what, road crews to be on the road and grabbing these contracts as fast as they're put up. And it's paid for in time and then collected later when everybody chips in their share. So this is what I call front tax rather than back tax. Right now they have front tax. They f tax you up front and then you got to pray they don't waste it. But in my system, the government uses an interest-free account, spends, 
And at the end of it all, back taxes tells you what they spent it on, and that's what they want the tax for. So it's pretty tough to get out there and collect for stuff and steal when people don't have to pay till they see what you got for it. So anyway, that's the new world coming. But all we have to do is get the rich at Davos. Imagine if the bankers who own the system, the bankers, if the Rothschilds and the Rockefellers and the people who own the banking networks decide to offer us time bank accounts beside our American and our Canadian ones, problem solved. Everybody can go sign up and register for a time bank account with their collateral. And everybody in the world ends up with a banking system account from the existing hardware. Just a new kind of software. They've added let's time bank dollar software to the, to the equation. So if the rich decide to do it, it's fixed. If they won't, the poor can do it. It would be fixed slower. But together, we have two weeks to get consensus out of the world's rich and the world's poor that resolution C6 to governments in the Millennium Declaration for a time standard of money where everybody can pay with the chips they got or with the cat with the time they want to pay back. Two ways to pay. In other words, your time is as good as gold for collateral at a bank to get a loan. And if you're willing to work or if you've got a ton of gold, either one's good enough to get collateral at a bank. Except now yellow rock's only going to be worth what yellow rock is worth compared to copper rock and silver rock and other kinds of rock. So now I have all these files here. I've captured these documents. I four or five inches worth. And these are people I want to contact over the next 10 days to see if any of them can be movers and do something. Now, for instance, let me give you an idea. AB, this is abolitionists, people who are already condemning interest and want an interest-free world. And of course, this is where I've done comments. People have already gotten close and I've got to make some comments on the internet. So I can put them up. And some correspondence from people who are interested in helping. And then finally, I got some articles about the crash, all the silly things humans do. You remember the army that didn't use the captured railroad system because they couldn't find the railroad tickets? Well, you got all these industries shutting down their industrial capacity and not using their industrial system because they can't find any money tickets. And I'm going to make fun of their misery and their pain, especially when you think about I got 80 videos out here, 10 minutes each. That's under 15 hours worth of lessons on how, for instance, Argentina saved itself, how we could save ourselves, good religious economic information, mathematical information. 15 hours worth of lessons in this one series for people to understand how to build themselves an economic lifeboat and save themselves. Well, anyway, crash victims. So I'm going to talk about how they're crashing, how they could be helped by a let's. And I'll probably do as many in a 10 minute segment as I can and switch on to the next file. Econ, well these are guys like in economics who think that interest is good is necessary. Imagine, they've never even contemplated poker chips. And I keep talking poker chips because money confuses people. It's got them hypnotized as to how they think it works. And it's pretty tough to change how you think it works and everybody else thinks it works. That's cognitive dissonance. But if I talk poker chips, well they know how poker chips work. And all of a sudden they're grounded and some of the stupid things about money become very clear when you put it in the context of a model, poker chips. So Islam, Islam is piggy banking interest free. Wonderful, but we need new credits. So we need a let's type casino style new money system into the system, not just piggy bank interest free. And let's, this is like in the last two months, all articles about community currencies, you know, on, in the news and the Time Magazine and uh, in the Chicago, they're talking about Milwaukee bucks. So systems being started up all over the world and commentary about community currencies can help, you know. Yeah, but I mean, one big uni let's one would solve it overnight. And of course, then there's miscellaneous, a few interesting stuff. Monetary reform file. The guys who say the Fed is bad and are organizing to fight the Fed without re realizing that the problem is shift B inflation. And they think it's shift A, so they want to fight the Fed who they think issued too much money. Well, if you think there's too much money in this world, you're crazy. But they fooled you into thinking inflation is shift A. So these are the Ron Paul, Dennis Kucinich, you know... American Monetary Reform Group, you know, who all want to fix the Fed, but 
they don't know about the interest being is the prime problem and they think there's already too much money because they think adding money into circulation creates inflation. Well, they don't understand that when you add chips into the game, it doesn't create inflation as long as the collateral backed up and they never contemplate that people are putting up collateral to get these loans. So, they're not off too far and if they can be convinced, they would bring along a whole segment of the world who want the monetary system fixed, the monetary reform movement, but the guys who were confused into thinking shift A was the problem when we know it's shift B and shift B is not even taught. I just discovered it a quarter century ago.